Welcome to Maths with Bob. Today we're looking at solving inequations with unknowns in the denominator. Okay. The technique usually is just multiply both sides of the inequality by the square of the denominator because we know that that's positive and hence we don't have to worry about flipping the sign. So basically this technique involves multiplying both sides by a positive quantity and hence we don't have to worry about changing the signs. Now when would we change the signs? Well if we multiply divide by a negative quantity or if we take the reciprocals and both sides are of the same sign then we would actually flip or change or, if you like, reverse the sign in the inequation or inequality. Okay, so let's, uh, first up, let's actually have a quick look. What would this look like? Well, I always like to think of it as a graphical interpretation to start with. Let's just try and draw a picture. Well, the picture would be something like this, okay? We'd have y equals 1x, which would be, you can see, a hyperbola. y equals a half, a line coming across here. And then we have to try and work out where was it above uh, that line, okay, so we need to work out where, well, what x values is the um, uh, gra graph y equals 1x above the line y equals a half. Now, we do this uh, algebraically, uh, as I said, by multiplying both sides by x squared, so you multiply both sides by x squared. Let's do that, 1 on x times x squared is x, and it's greater than or equal to a half of x squared, that's okay. No worries about changing the sign, x squared was positive. Okay, so uh, we now multiply by 2, 2x is less than or equal to x squared. Put the x squared on the other side, uh, and then obviously it's going to be zero now, and I'll try and factor it. So we take an x out of, what's that? Uh, 2 minus x. It's going to be zero. And you can see here we're going to run across these all the time in these sort of problems, solving these things called quadratic inequalities or quadratic equations. And uh, how do we uh, view this? Well, I would like to try and draw a graph as well. OK, y, x, OK. Now the parabola y equals 2x minus x squared has a 0 at, you can see here, 0, and 1 at uh, 2. OK, so that it will be basically going like this. OK, and we can see the solution straight away is, in fact, uh, this part here, OK, the one which is actually sitting above the y equals 0 line, OK, all right, uh, or the x-axis, if you like, in the positive y. Okay, so we normally think of a solution as, okay, uh, like this, x, okay, such that, now x is now less than or equal to 0, and less than or equal to, say, 2. So in roughly in between 0 and 2, the x values uh, would generate a positive y value. Now, the only problem with this is that uh, you can see there's a slight problem. When we, whenever I see one of these, I always write over here, x cannot equal 0. Okay, this may impact on the solution, and you can see here it is going to impact over here. Uh, we need to actually adjust that. So let's adjust the solution so it's correct. So we need to now, so we can just wipe it out a little bit. It's a bit tricky. Okay, now I've adjusted the solution so it's actually correct. So it's between 0 and 2. It does equal, can equal 2, but not 0. Okay, let's look at a harder example. Okay, uh, here we have uh, the harder example. You can see here 3x plus 1 all over x minus 4 is greater than or equal to a third. Now, um, a lot of people may not be able to see what that sketch looks like. What does y equal 3x plus 1 over x minus 4 equal? Well, the way to do that is uh, you just go, uh, you need a bit of polynomial long division ideas here, but basically 3x plus 1. How many times does x go into 3x? It goes 3 times. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times minus 4 is minus 12. Then you subtract them and you end up getting that uh, basically uh, 0 here. And you get what? 1 minus minus 12 is actually 13, positive 13. OK. So basically that tells me that uh, this curve, y equals 3x plus 1 over x minus 4 could be written as 3 plus 13 over x minus 4. Okay, So how would I sketch that curve? Well, let's actually just rub this out for a second. How would we sketch that curve? Well, uh, we know it's 3. I mean, the curve y equals 13 over x minus 4. So at minus 4, well, hold on, when minus 4 x minus 4 is 0, that means at positive 4, I should say, there's an asymptote to the hyperbola 
13 over x minus 4, so that would be the, that value there would be say 4. Uh, 13 would just mean the arms are going up a bit quicker. The 3 would raise up the, the y equals 0 asymptote up to 3 here. 3, and we have the arms, this is a positive hyperbola, in here somewhere. Okay, and then we're trying to work out where is it greater than a third. So where's a third? Um, let's draw a third in, so that's 3, oh, just somewhere along here. So this would be, say, 1 third. So we're basically trying to find out where is that curve larger than a third. Well, interestingly enough, if you look at this, you can see, wow, over here it is. Yeah, sure, that arm. And there's a little bit here as well. OK, we have to find. OK, so how are we going to find these values? I can just read off the solution. X is larger than 4 straight off. But this other one I can't work out just easily. So I'm going to uh, do the algebraic technique. OK, so let's actually rub these out. OK. OK, let's rub this out and approach it from the algebraic way, which is multiply everything by uh, x minus 4 all squared. So the left-hand side will be just, uh, what, 3, lots of, uh, well, not just yet, we won't multiply by 3, but I'll just multiply 3x plus 1 by, well, one of those factors would cancel, minus 4 is greater than or equal to 1 third of x minus 4 all squared. OK, now, I would now multiply by 3, uh, so we'd end up with 3 lots of... Now, what is this going to be? Well, 3, uh, 3x squared, uh, minus 12x plus x, minus 11x, OK, minus 4. OK, we multiply both sides by 3, so we're just left with uh, x minus 4 all squared here, which is what, x squared minus 8x plus 16. OK, then I just multiply it out and move over everything. Uh, 3, 3 is a 9, minus 1, so 8x squared is left here, 8x squared. OK, 3, negative 11 is negative 33, plus 8, OK, minus 25x, OK, minus 12. Then move the, the positive 16 over, which should become negative 16, so it'll be minus 28. Now that's going to be greater than or equal to 0. Now you can see here, this is another quadratic inequality, and we need to try and factor this, OK? Um, let's have a look. I think the factors are 8x, x, I think 7 and minus 4. Now, this, you could fiddle with these for a while, uh, but let's just check the cross. The cross, okay, the cross was minus 32x plus 7x, okay, which is equal to, okay, minus 25x. Okay, okay, so fantastic. Uh, we now can say that this quadratic can be factored into 8x plus 7, reading across the top, remember, across the bottom, x minus 4, and that has to be greater than or equal to 0. OK, so we now would draw up a, another parabola. This time it's a positive parabola, just a little picture for the quadratic inequality. Uh, here we go. The solutions would be, what, 4 over here, and it looks like minus 7 eighths over here, minus 7 eighths. OK, and then we just draw a parabola through here. Now, where is this greater than or equal to 0? Well, let's have a look. Greater than or equal to 0 here. OK, it's sitting above, and also here. OK. Now, again, just be wary, OK? x cannot equal 4, OK? All right, because if it was, the denominator would be 0, and hence the uh, value would be undefined at that point. So. What happens? Well, you might remember there was actually an asymptote there. So uh, let's have a look at the solutions now. Um, so the solution would be, let's have a look. OK. OK, it's uh, x such that. Now, let's fix up this one. So x is now just greater than 4, not or equal to. And x is actually less than or equal to minus 7 over 8. OK, we'll just leave it for there for today. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.